if you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, you're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. This video includes timestamps, so check out the description below if you want to bounce ahead and just grab the info that you want. Hey friends, Shane from HowToWrench.com, and I am doing the CBR400RR carburetors, and I thought I'd share something that I hadn't seen before. And this is an actual Japanese import model. And on these carbs, we're finding a lot of problems, unfortunately, but one of the things I'd never seen before is like tape, some type of tape wedged in between uh, the fuel rail here on the fuel lines. And it's throughout, and it's really faded, so it looks like it's been there a long time. But I had not seen that. I don't know if it's something that they just did. I mean, after a million carburetors here uh, in the U.S. from the 70s to uh, current carburetors, I've never seen a Japanese manufacturer do something with tape. Um, some of the other things when we were first tearing this apart, if you remember, it had uh, some goofy, like, silicone. Let's get focused there. Silicone on. Well... Unfortunately, on this side, it's a pretty bad deal. You can actually see the float inside of there, and the piece fell down in, and what went there was the throttle position sensor. So this this just keeps getting worse and worse. Some of the air stuff, people have definitely been in here. We know the bike's been worked on, but like this gasket was pinched over. Um, let's lay a good one on there, obviously. Three of them were perfect. You know nice and flat but this one walked and somebody didn't catch it when they were installing it but weird weird stuff um the bike was a runner so we know it had the full capability of running so i'm not really uh it's funny how how bad things can be yet they'll still run and there won't be a customer complaint because if you remember this is the one that had the pinch wire it had the crankcase vent unhooked um it had a clamp uh, not tightened at all Still a little unsure what to do here. This really seems to be the wrong clamp in the wrong orientation But I just haven't researched it that far. But anyway, I thought I'd just throw it out there in a the community We might have some other uh, experts especially on the the Japanese restoration side or Japanese specific models where maybe you can explain this if you've seen this if this is normal factory I'm gonna do some research too. I'll hop online and see what I can come up with I decided to go ahead and just make two videos uh, Finish this one and show you the thoughts of that disassembled plus show you what a before and after 30 minute cycle in the ultrasonic would do and then look at my next upload and it'll be how to actually split the wrap All right, give him a quick dusting in the mineral spirit parts washer. Off they go into the ultrasonic. It's been heating up this morning, got a couple of degrees Celsius to go, and we hit. Let's see how they turn out. All right, here we are, fresh out of the ultrasonic tank. All I did is just blow dry them with, a, with an air gun, but kind of give you an idea of what one 30 minute cycle at 50 degrees Celsius with uh, 300 milliliters of that simple green D um, could do. So I'll put some side by side uh, comparisons in there. Still can't believe, I don't know what the hell that is, but new to me. Um, pretty impressive job here for just like I said, one 30 minute cycle. It really takes the work work off for us so just kind of getting that base off there so then it doesn't get the soda or the vapor blast as dirty as well but uh, this is a pretty unfortunate deal I really 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 think this is a wrecked uh, motorcycle and something really goofy's happened because they silicone that or somebody dropped it and now that they're apart you can actually see the crack down in there Oop, take that back maybe not Oh, there it is. I mean, you can just see it's dented in. Yeah, it is a crack down there. I can feel it with my hand. Yep. And then the really bummer of a deal, the bad one there on that throttle position sensor. Let's see, where's that little chunk at? There it is. So that's the stud that's casted on there, and it just popped out, but... Um, I did find 
uh, a donor set of carbs. So this is just too risky. I talked to the customer about it and he agreed to. I mean, it's just not worth the chance, but trying to figure out what happened. I mean, the moment you see something so out of character like that, like, you know, out of place, out of, you know, whatever, uh, it's just, you're like, what in the heck? Why would someone do that? There's a reason. Definitely a reason. I haven't, obviously, uh, you know, even began to split them. It's real simple. All we do is pop off um, this bolt and this bolt at this point and then pull them apart. But before you ever go do that, you got to know like, well, what's going to be affected right before you split a rack. And the first thing I could see right away, there's a missing part. Look at that. Of all that right there, there's a missing part. Let me show you what it is. See that little spring? And see how that one's missing? So that one's missing. Because when you split a rack on inline four cylinder, you're always going to have these between uh, matching or side-by-side -side cylinders, if you will. At least this is the way I've seen our Hondas. And then the other thing is, we'll see if they're there. Yep. That little top spring right there will come loose. There should be another one there. There is. And there is there. So all three of those are there. And then the other thing to be mindful when you're splitting is this is going to come loose. This little spacer right here. Then you have the vent tube for the CV side of it. We have a fuel inlet, a singular one, and then two crossover pipes. Looks like we have another piece that would separate off there. Uh, there's more than likely a dowel pin here, here. Uh, I bet there's a dowel pin even in there. Might be just part of this. That feels like aluminum though. So there might be two dowel pins there and then a dowel pin there. But that's pretty standard practice, you know. We think. You want me to split them quick and then uh, you can actually see what that, you know, what this looks like. There, I'm all, I've only ever seen these with O-rings on here. Matter of fact, here's a set off the F3, these spares. is one of the pieces of this is what we had to steal. Yep. Actually, we'll find the, uh, the broke one. So... This is just such common practice to be o-ringed in there. I don't know what that tape is. You know what? I say we go for it. I say we just go ahead and split this rack real quick. You can see me do it. And if you've never done it before, it'll make sense. And it might be something you want to talk to yourself. So let me do it. This is how far we take every single carburetor apart. And that is all the way. And then we'll actually take and get a little screwdriver and uh, pull those springs out before we start blasting them so they don't get lost. And then everything stays organized. Well, hey, uh, I think, I really think we answered our question. And I think that's what happened. But, geez, isn't that a bummer? Can you see that hole in there? How could you not? Let's look at that dented one up close. I just don't know if you guys can see how that's, it's like it got smacked or who knows if someone was trying to get a carb bowl off and, you know, got nuts and banged into it or dropped it on the ground. I, I don't know. There's a lot of different things that could happen, but all right, my friends, I, I hope you enjoyed kind of playing around with me here in the workshop. Maybe learn some things about how to split a carb rack since you've never seen that before. And just a fun little story in progress as we keep trying to wrap things up on the CBR 400 RR we're super uh <laughs> we keep getting delayed on this and what I'm dying to finish this thing up for is because if you remember and just in case you don't know we've got all the cool prop tech tools to use on this motorcycle. I was just talking to the fellows at PropTech and uh, here's one for carb sync and so cool because you download the software and you can actually uh, check it out digitally so you can save it, you know, capture it, give it to the customer and then obviously dial it in within just a infinite little detail. So that's going to be super cool. But I, I said before, this is the one I, I'm just ridiculously stoked about and that is this for being able to do relative compression and and a bunch of amp testing and uh, direct voltage testing. I'm just, this is the one, this current tester that I can't wait to use. So super, 
stoked about that. They just sent me over some uh, how-to instructions from the experts that built it and say, hey, let's, uh, let's get you schooled on that yourself. So, all right, my friends, as always, I'm going to get back at it. Thanks for stopping in. You make it a great day, and keep wrenching. Thank you.